Hey, what's up, it's Leah. I am so excited to show you around this Notion setup that will help you get organized and manage your life in one place without feeling overwhelmed. This system is built as a template that you can grab and I'll also show you how it's been set up if you want to build something similar. I'm going to break it down step by step and by the end of this, you'll know how to use this template and also understand some of the key principles of setting up a Notion workspace. So let's get into it. Quick tip. If you're using the Notion app, one of the cool features is that you can pin tabs, which will keep them in your top navigation bar, which is super helpful. First off, let's talk about the framework, which is the organizational structure that makes the system work so well. Let's check out the databases or backend. This template is inspired by the PARA system. PARA is an acronym for projects, areas, resources, and archive. And honestly, it's game changer for organizing your Notion workspace. Here's how it works. Areas represent key aspects of your life or business. They're like the big buckets that hold everything together. For a business, this could be like marketing, operations, or finance. Projects are your short-term goal-driven tasks. This could be like launching a product, meeting a client deadline, or even something like an exam or wedding. Resources are where you store the supporting materials that help you to complete projects or maintain your areas. Things like templates, guides, research materials, and documents. And once something is completed or it becomes dated, it gets archived, which works as a simple checkbox. What's really cool about Notion is that it's not like folders on your desktop where things live in one place. But by connecting these databases, it becomes an empowerful and intuitive linking system where things are always updated and always accessible. In this template, I've set up the databases on one page, which is best practice for Notion, well, I believe it's best practice, for a clean and protected structure. Even if you delete or change your dashboard, the databases will still be intact as long as you don't delete this page. So you can always rebuild your workspace and with our organizational framework already in place, you have the full freedom to structure your views and dashboards in a way that it makes sense for you. One of the standout features in this template is how the dashboard is structured around three mindsets, productivity, care, and life. These mindsets serve as like the guiding principles for creating areas of focus. The productivity mindset is all about getting things done. It's your active to-dos, your projects, your tasks, your deadlines. This section helps you stay focused on the work that needs to happen right now. The care mindset focuses on self-care and our daily habits. I like to have a lot of things on my dashboard, but I also don't want to be overwhelmed. The way that I like to use this is to leave the care section open at the end of the day. It's also important for my brain to close down the productivity section. Then the following day when I log on, I can check off my habits before moving into the stuff I have going on. The life mindset is all about you as a person and the aspects of your life, your goals, your values, and the things that you like. Why it works. Well, structuring the dashboard around these three mindsets works because it helps you create clear, distinct categories of focus. It's not just like a mishmash of tasks. And it's also more of a holistic approach that separates out our to-dos, our wellness, and our aspiration. The separation helps to reduce overwhelm and provides clarity by being able to zoom in and zoom out when you need to. Great. Now let's get into each section. I'll show you how the tools work and how to edit them. Areas in Notion act as like a digital filing system. It's like creating a master tag that holds everything relating to that area together. Sub areas is a system I've introduced to make sure that things don't get too overwhelming as you scale. So instead of creating 30 to 40 different areas, which can become a bit chaotic and hard to manage, you can focus on four to six main areas, and then within those areas, you can have sub areas to break things down even further. For example, as a business owner, you might have a marketing area, but under that, you could have sub areas for social media strategy or content strategy. This keeps things high level and simple without getting lost in the weeds. 
When starting out, areas serve as like a tagging system. And as your areas grow, you can build them out into focused workspaces. As these grow, sub areas can then become more dedicated workspaces. The beauty of this is that it keeps things broad and manageable while still allowing you to dive deeper into the specific tasks or projects when needed. As your business or your personal goals grow, you can just expand the framework by adding more sub areas or tags to filter out your resources even more. Cool. So to set this up, let's say I'm happy with my areas, but I'm also studying. So let me add an area for that. Perfect, and I'll leave this for now. Great, now that we're all set up, let me show you around the productivity section. It's simple, but it's like a legit project management system. So we have buttons for quick actions, a sketch pad to jot down any to-dos or things to remember. Not everything needs to be a task. Projects with preset views for active, a board view, planned, goals, and someday. To show you how to use tasks, let's go ahead and create a project. And let's do an explainer video. We can add our project details and link any resources. We can add tasks to the project, which you can have as a list, board, or timeline. Let's add some tasks. So for this, let's do a script, a storyboard, and a motion sample. We'll probably have more tasks than this, but let's keep it simple for now. And let's set a due date for the script for today, and let's leave the others for now. Great. The inbox will show tasks that do not have a due date or project assigned. This can be helpful as a reminder, and you can also clear tasks straight from the inbox. Not everything needs to be scheduled or live with a project. We can view what we have upcoming for the day, the week, tasks with no due date, or a board view. In the scheduling section, we can view our tasks by the week, month, or timeline, which is great for scheduling. We can also set dependencies between tasks. Great, so let's say today I will work on the script and let's actually pretend that we are pulling this time out so i want to track the time that i spend here clicking the button will activate a page on our time tracking log for this task if i go back to my task you'll see that we now have a tra time tracking property which has been activated and i can see that i'm actively tracking time on this task this will also reflect on your project so you can get an overview of the total time that you've spent on a project Great, so let's go ahead and end the session because I was interrupted and let me start a new session. That's an overview of the faulted views on this section. Notion gives tons of options to customize this so you can adjust the properties shown and the filters and really set it up in a way that it works well for you and your team. Page templates are one of the coolest features. In the project template is a view of the task database and this has a filter applied to only show us what's associated with this project page. This means that any new tasks that we add here will automatically be assigned to this project. And you can customize these templates if you have standard ways of working or capturing project information. You can even preload relevant resources like documents or assets. If we create a new project, we should see that our template has been updated. Great. You can have multiple templates as well for different types of projects, so it's really customizable. In the care section, we have a daily habit tracker to check off our daily habits. This is already set up for the whole of 2025, so you won't need to add or reset anything. This view is set to show the current day, so it will update every day. The monthly report is also populated for the rest of the year, and this pulls data from our daily habits database, so you can get an overview of how consistent you've been over a month and a year. We have some buttons to log your daily mood, so let's say, today I'm feeling amazing. You can change the button text. Personally, I like to see my mood in color, but you can set these to be emojis as well. 
You can adapt these to track anything, actually, like it could even be habits of substances that you want to avoid. There are some extra views for the week, month, and an overview of your mood for the year. Let's get into a habits page and I'll show you how to customize this. We have five habits and a formula which counts these specific habits. Rename the text for the habits that you want to track and the formula will still work perfectly. To add habits, let's add a checkbox property and name it. Now we can see that this property doesn't change our progress bar, so we'll need to update the formula and I'll show you how. There are two important things. We need to account for all of our habits and the number at the top should match our number of habits. So let's add a plus sign, shift enter to move on to a new line, start tapping to number and select it from the list. Add your habit by selecting it from the list. If you are adding multiple habits, add a plus sign and repeat the process. The last line should not have a plus sign as we're not adding anything further. Then we'll make sure that our number at the top matches our number of habits and we are done. Now let's update our monthly report. If you've renamed habits, you can simply rename them here. Our progress bar pulls data directly from our habit progress bar, which we have already updated, so that's great. To see our stats for the habits we have added, we'll need to create a rollup property. Let's relate this to our habit tracker and we want to see the run property. Let's show it as a ring and let's remove the number. The daily habits pages can also be used as digital journals if you're into that kind of thing. You can load images, letters or even videos for your future self. This is pretty cool because it becomes like a digital look back at the end of the year. Just add a select property to create a highlight tag. I load an image every month or so or when something significant happens. Now let's focus on you. This section focuses on you as a person and your life and you can customize it to show what's most important to you. Let me show you the tools in this section. We have our goals, which are actually just projects with a smart tag, a vision board, a home maintenance tracker and a view of some of our resources. We also have a finance tracker and some buttons to quickly log expenses or income. At the moment, this focuses on your personal life, but if you're a solopreneur or in the early stages of a business setup, you can use this as your business dev section to set your vision and your goals and house your resources. The vision board in this template is a simple gallery database with some unsplash images at the moment. You can reset the cover images by uploading, linking, or use images from Unsplash. These are also pages, so if you want, you can add details for the aspects of your vision, and you can shuffle this around to meet the aesthetic that you like. The cleaning tracker. This could actually be used for anything where you have things that you want to perform at different intervals, so like some things daily, some weekly, or even every few months. Instead of using the recurring task feature in Notion, this uses a button. So let me show you how it works. We have a recur unit, a recur interval, and a formula to calculate our next due date. So for this task, it will repeat every one week. Let me show you the button automation. When clicked, this creates a new task. The due date is set to the next due, which is our formula calculation and the status of this page is set to done. To edit this, add tasks, due dates, and the recur interval. You could also use this for something else, let's say like a workout tracker, or maybe you want to have both. Instead of creating a duplicate of this database, you can add a tag for the type of task that it is. Let's get into goals. Adding a goal will create a project on our main projects database with a smart tag to separate it from our main project views. This means that you can bring any important tasks or milestones into your productivity section and tackle them in that headspace. Or keep it simple and use the checkbox. In this demo, we don't have a ton of resources loaded. 
If you have tons, you can adjust the filters here to refine the resources that you want to have quick access to here. The Finance Tracker. This template also has a simple finance tracker with databases for income, expense, and monthly summary. To adjust the currency, edit the amount property and find your currency. Do this for the expense tracker too. And we'll also update the formula in our monthly summary. These formulas round the number and show our currency. So let's rename this to our currency and we'll do the same for the other two formulas. Perfect. A lot of us might focus on our vision or goals normally at the beginning of the year or something and then this kind of falls by the wayside so having this section helps to really keep the focus in the top section you'll find quick navigation which is great for mobile and pages where you can get a more detailed view of your main databases here you can make updates or when you really want to focus in on a view of one section. This is also great to make adjustments to the properties or add fields to your bigger databases. Once you're happy with the setup, remove the demo pages and reset the template to get a clean slate. So you might be thinking, cool for me, but how does this work for a team? As someone who spent the better part of the last 15 years helping teams streamline workflows, for me, Notion is a real game changer. For small teams, it's simple, scalable, and it doesn't have a steep learning curve. So you can manage your to-dos, your areas, and your documents all in one spot. For enterprise teams, a lot of teams will have really great specialized um, project management systems, which are normally for client work. Um, but when it comes to the internal stuff, <laughs> it's like chaos. And Notion can really give you a centralized, customizable space to keep everything running smoothly behind the scenes as well. In startups, things are always like a bit all over the place, which works until it doesn't. And once you start scaling, that's when you realize it's time to like get organized. But here's the thing. Don't just dump stuff into Notion and hope for the best. Start with a solid framework, like the Pyro framework, to keep things neat and suddenly it's like everything is organized for you. Trust me, it just makes everything run way faster. One of the key benefits of the system is how personalizable it is. So after you've set up the basics, you can edit the system to fit your personal needs. You can change the colors, adjust how your views are filtered, or even change how the dashboard is structured. Everything is flexible. So that's a quick tour of how the setup works. If you have the template, I really hope you like it. And if you don't and want to grab it, I'll put the link in the comments. Okay, thanks, bye.